Okay, so now for everyone who's uh, sitting there at home and alone, you can uh, do the following demo, which is to make a fist. So I'm making a fist, right or left hand doesn't matter. Uh, the brain is basically like a boxing glove, like your fist and your thumb, it's gonna be your temporal lobe. Your knuckles are gonna be your frontal lobe. Back of your hand is gonna be your parietal lobe and your, your wrist uh, arm is connecting to your wrist is where your occipital lobe is gonna be located. And then as we go to the mesial surface, the boundary here, is going to form uh, the limbus or the, a boundary where the cortex ends, ends up there in that corpus callosum. And that is just generally referred to as limbic cortex, limbus meaning edge. Now there's multiple things going on in there, but that's sort of the big gross level divvying up of the brain. Now you can computationally unfold, inflate and view cortex. So here's a three-dimensional rendering of a human brain and I've color coded in tan, the frontal cortices, green, the parietal, uh, in salmon, pink, the occipital and the temporal lobe here in blue. And as you can see, you can computationally just increase and reveal the deeper lying sulci. And these are gonna be common in all humans and, and in many primates for that matter. So for instance, we talked earlier, uh, in an earlier talk about the central sulcus located here nice centrally in the brain and the sylvian fissure. Uh, deep fissure in here, segmenting the thumb out where we have our temporal lobe. And you can just uh, take that extreme and flatten it, what have you. So the flow of information, the general organization for the brain is going to be uh, from this Luria model where we have sensation coming in from the eyes, skin, the ears, what have you, going up through relay nuclei in the thalamus, and then thalamus up into primary visual cortices, primary somatosensory, primary auditory cortices, and then from there up into uh, secondary or association cortices, and ultimately uh, all this information is coming together in associations uh, which give you a unified perception of a single object. So for instance, if you were to click your finger, I can hear the clicking of my finger, I can see the clicking finger, I have a sense of touch to it. This is a single unified event, and I perceive it as such, even though from the sensory perspective, all of that is uh, being conveyed through different sensory channels. Now, the major thing to remember about organization of the brain is that it's a nice div division from the sensory systems, mostly in posterior portions, and then we have the motor systems, mostly anterior, uh, to the central sulcus. And this is going to be similar to what we saw about the um, in the brainstem, the alar plate opens, and you have that sulcus limitans. You have uh, motor more medially and sensory more laterally. And here in cortex, we also have a rough division of motor more anteriorly and sensory more on the posterior surface. So for instance, we have at the posterior lobe, primary visual cortex, we have laterally, just inside, deep in that sylvian sulcus, auditory cortex, and along that post-central lobule, uh, the primary uh, sensory cortex for sense of touch. Okay, so in the next series of slides, we're going to hit one through seven, motor, somatosensory, vestibular, vision, hearing, taste, and smell as primary cortical systems before we go to associational areas. Any questions to this point? Okay. So learn in first uh, first couple blocks of a neuroscience cor course that there's all these uh, horrific tracks and pathways coming up the brainstem to get to the cortex, which we're going to bypass. Other than to say the peripheral nervous system, touch, pain, temperature. Coming up here, for example, into the thalamus. Thalamus is then going to project that information of I'm feeling sensation on my toe to primary somatosensory cortex and also to somatosensory association cortices and put together, I uh, have the sensation. And there's a crossing here. And then similarly with motor cortices coming back down, you have your primary uh, motor cortex, premotor and supplementary motor areas working together kind of as a trifecta of regions that are then going to send information to say, oh, I'm going to wiggle my toe. And you have these cortical bulbar and cortical spinal tracts that then cross at the pyramids uh, and decussate cross. So this sets up the, the point here. This slide is that you have these crossing so that when you hear about the left side of the brain controls the right side of the broad body, 
well, this is where we're talking about various levels of crossing are occurring. And that's important to keep track of from, that's from a neurosurgeon perspective. So for instance, here are the pyramids and the pyramidal decussation for motor input will be coming down in here. 90% of the fibers are crossing over from the right to the left or vice versa. And that's where that decussation occurs. And similarly, here are those pyramids again, and here's that inferior olive, some, uh, some neuroanatomy to give you some flashbacks to when you had learned this stuff or when you're going to be learning this stuff in upcoming years. Hey everyone, Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you liked that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.